I paid a total of £60 for a Nintendo Switch that is broken, it doesn't charge, and it doesn't power on off of eBay. I always find myself asking the same question. Why am I wearing a dressing gown? And also, why do I keep buying Nintendo Switches if I can't fix them? I'm really hoping and praying, so is my wallet, that today is different. This is my fourth Nintendo Switch. Let's see if we can fix it. <laughs> Please wish me luck, I need it. I need all the luck in the world that is possibly available. Let's go. Firstly, I just want to check and just have a look at the overall condition. We're missing the kickstand at the back, but other than that, we're looking all right. How is the charging port looking? It doesn't look horrendous, to be honest with you. So what we're going to do is stick in our USB-C amp meter. So we're getting a draw of 0.14 amps, 140 milliamps. I have seen a few videos where people seem to think that when it's 0.14, 0.13, it can sometimes be stuck in, I think, RCM mode. So I'm just gonna plug this into my PC and see if anything pops up. Okay, nothing has popped up. So what I'm just quickly gonna do is turn this around. That just makes sense that, that way, doesn't it, Joey? Just to double check and see if we get the same both sides. So 0 point, yeah, 0 0.14. That to me would actually tell me that the charging port itself is fine. It's something to do with the actual switch itself. So with us knowing this information, let us take the switch apart and investigate and see what's going on. I will try and turn it on real quick. Just to double check, nothing. Seems to be quite dusty on the inside. I don't know if this has been taken apart before, you know, just purely because of how dusty it is. And that makes me happy, because maybe I actually stand a chance with this, you know? So I'm gonna quick scan for any like immediate issues that I can see. Water damage indicator seems fine. There's a lot of dust, but that's as expected. That's no problem at all. I can't see any water damage on the device from looking at it face on. Actually looks pretty clean, in my opinion. First things first, me thinks. Let's try a different battery, just to rule that out straight off the bat. So we put the amp meter in now, see what we read. So remember it was 1, 0 0.13, 0 0.14, still exactly the same. We have the board out now, so let's take it under the microscope and see if we can see any issues, potentially. I think first of all, quick visual inspection of the port itself. Nothing unusual there other than quite a lot of dust and dirt. Other than a lot of dirt, the uh, the board itself seems in pretty good condition. All the solder joints and everything else look fine. So that's uh, M92, that looks fine. We've got the resistor which seems to be in place and looks okay, but again I'll test in a second with continuity. The coils there, we've got the BQ chip, which I mean the soldering on the side of the BQ chip down here doesn't look great, but I don't think anyone's been in this device. so. I'm reluctant to say that anyone's changed this out, I don't think they have. But everything else looks hunky-dory, to be honest. This area is just underneath the CPU as well, but this all looks okay. And then if we look at the back as well, P13 USB, this on the face of it looks fine with no issues. And we have some other little bits and bobs over here, but again, everything looks okay. So we're just going to test for some shorts. The charging port itself looks done in, <laughs> but I think it's okay. Meter in continuity mode. First thing we're going to check is the fuse just above the charging port. So we have the charging port here. This is the fuse just above it. And we get a beep, so we know that that's all good. Then we're going to move up. We'll check this filter here. That's fine. This side, they're not connecting. That's fine. They're not connecting. That's not connecting. They're not connecting. So that filter's good as well. I believe this capacitor, so this is the M92 chip, I believe this capacitor actually relates to a dead CPU. So I'm just gonna double check that. No, that seems fine, I don't think. Yep, that's all good. So no dead CPU, which is nice to know. That seems to be fine. So the line that I'm gonna be checking is the one that goes to this chip. That's fine. These are all fine. These caps up here. Okay, all right, hold on then. So we seem to have a short. So these are all ground, these sides are ground which is fine, that's how it's meant to be. So ground, ground, ground. I thought that was shorting a second ago. Yeah, it is. Okay, so that's shorting. That isn't. That is. 
So that's short to ground both sides, this one. That's short as well. So it's most likely then that we have a bad M92. On the last couple of switches I've done, I wasn't actually able to find a short. So this is like new territory to me, you know? This is actually indicating a problem with probably the M92 chip. I'm just gonna flip the board over and just check P13. Check the caps around here and make sure that we don't have a short this side. I personally think the problem is M92. Let's check these filters quick and make sure that we're all good. And they don't cross either. Okay, so all the filters are fine. We think the issue lies at M92 T36. So here with me I have a replacement M92 T36 chip, which is fresh and brand new. However, the last thing I want to check is just to make sure, I didn't check if there was any shorts around BQ. So meter in continuity mode again. All good. All right, okay. Well, I think we're safe to remove M92. So let's remove M92 T36 and see if those shorts still exist. It's probably very loud because of the fan, but I think that was quite a clean pull. By the way, that was a temperature of 450 degrees Celsius and an airflow speed of three out of eight because I didn't want to knock any of the components off around the chip. I'm gonna go ahead and put the new chip straight on. So as you can see, there's the arrow for pin number one, which should be like this. And the writing was this way anyway. So just get this into position. I feel like that's position enough. I just need to tack it down. So again, 450, three out of eight on the airspeed. Give it a little bit of heat. Just to tack it down, I think that's down enough. Then I'm gonna apply some more flux to help the situation. Perfect, and then we're gonna come back in with the heat. And when I see the solder go again, what I'm gonna do is press down on the chip with my tweezers, just to make sure it's nice and secure. So the solder's getting wet now. I think it's gonna put itself in place, to be honest. I'm just gonna give it a little poke. And that's just me holding down the chip. I think that's all good. Scrap that, I knocked a little resistor off. So as you can see on the left hand side, I don't know if you can see, just over here, where I'm pointing now, I've knocked a little resistor up, so I'm just gonna try and get that back down quickly. I don't think it's quite in place, so I'm gonna add a tiny bit of flux just on top of it, and hopefully surface tension pulls that straight back, hopefully. There we go, pop. Sweet, okay. I'm gonna uh, use some IPA, just to clean up the flux that we've got around it. As you can see, it will evaporate very quick, very, very quick. <laughs> There's a lot of flux on there as well. Just gonna wait for the board to cool down a second because it is very hot. And now we check to make sure that I've soldered M92 correctly, which is the biggest thing. That looks pretty solid, in my opinion. I'm okay with that. That also looks pretty solid. Pretty solid. And the final side, pretty solid, I think. Is the, I just wanna make sure that the chip is definitely soldered flat onto the board, just to make sure it's got the best connection as possible. And I think that is an okay job, guys. I think I've done all right here. Now we need to check and make sure that the shorts around these capacitors are gone. If they are, then I'm probably gonna cry because I've not managed to fix a Nintendo Switch as of yet as I'm sure I've told you in this video. So meter in continuity mode, mode that beeps. Black probe on ground. First cap, all good. Second cap, all good. Third cap, all good. And this one, all good. Just making sure that it's still actually beeping. Yeah, it is. Okay. These are all meant to beep, these are all ground. What about uh, the caps over here, just to make sure. I'm just gonna go over these real quick. 
So this one, that's fine, that's fine. Uh, and then this one down here, fine. Okay, all right, okay, all right. Don't get too excited. Let's go back to overhead cam to see if this works. I've just placed a new battery in to just check and see what's happening when we go to charge it, see if we have, you know, if there's any difference. Now we were having 0.14, I believe, on the amp meter before we uh, before we done that. So let's see if this has changed at all. Please work. 0 0.44, 4, 6, 4, Okay. This is plugged in via USB-A to USB-C, so I don't know if it will ramp up to fast charge. I don't think it's going to. So let me try it on an actual plug. Okay, plug is in. So we've got 15 volts, 0 0.49 amps. Is it gonna go up to fast charging? Please, please, please. Oh, I okay, so I don't know, actually, thinking about it, I don't know if it will without everything else in, but 0 0.49 I feel like is a, is a healthy draw. So, and the board's still not relatively hot, but you know, it's warm, so I can't really tell if it's turned on or not. Let me get it back in the housing and we'll double check. But that's better than 0.14, so I'll take that. I'm also just quickly gonna give the charging port a clean because it is filthy. In case there was some sort of miracle that this is gonna work, I've put my face cam on just so you guys can see my reaction. I'm putting one screw in for good luck, okay? Maybe two. I'm being so delicate with this whole thing because I just want it to be okay. I want it, I really, really, really want it to work. Yes, I'm wearing a dressing gown. Moment of truth. Do we get anything on the screen when we go to charge this switch? This obviously isn't the end of it. It might need uh, you know, a new cartridge slot or the Joy-Cons don't work and stuff, but this is for basic testing. Does it charge? Do we see a light? A charging symbol of any sort, please give me strength. 0 0.08 amps. If you guys could hear how loud I'm screaming in my brain, you'd probably be deafened by how loud it is. We have the battery charging symbol, that's amazing. That means that the screen works, the backlight works, that's really, really good. However, we've got a 0.11 amp draw on the amp meter. I think it's just because how dead the battery is, so I just need to give it a little bit of time. Leave it on charge and hopefully we can give this a proper test. I wanna test the Joy-Cons. I wanna make sure that it can read games. So the battle's not over yet, but I, I'm very happy that I managed to swap that chip. It went up to around about 0.73 amps when I plugged it in, so let's plug it in and just see if this bad boy turns on. 0.3, yep, 0.46, 0.47, and I'm assuming this is when it boots. Yep, all good. Okay, wicked. 0.8. 11% battery. Does touchscreen work? <laughs> yes, come on! Oh, man. Okay, hello. Oh, wait a minute, let's turn the volume all the way up. Scroll works. Okay, look at this, man. All right, so this must mean that you need a cart to play, right? Yeah, insert game cart. Let's see if it takes a game. So I've got Pokemon Sword here, which is the only game that I have for Switch. Let's see if this works. So I'll put this in this way, I think. Yeah, there we go, Pokemon Sword, baby. Okay, fine, so the game cartridge slot works. I'll give that a full-on test later on. So that's wicked, I could take that out. Oh, it stays there as well, that's cool. Now, will Joy-Cons work? Moment of truth. Right or left, let's go right. Yes, come on, paired as well. Yeah, okay, left one, oh please, for a full house. Yes, wicked, there we go, look. Oh, had a minute there, all right. These need to charge as well. I don't know when the last time I, I used them on an actual console because I've not ever had an actual working switch. So I don't know what the charge of these controllers are. I have a working Nintendo Switch. All I need to do now is reformat it and it's all good to go. This has been a long time coming. It's my first Switch that I've actually successfully managed to repair out of a total of four. So thanks for those who have stuck around to see me do this. <laughs> Make sure to hit that thumbs up button for fixing this Nintendo Switch. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here and this is the first video that you're seeing of mine and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, peace.